Hi everyone, I'm Ashley Davis, developer of Dataforge Notebook and author of Data Wrangling with JavaScript. In this video, I'll be showing you how to backtest a quantitative trading strategy using JavaScript. I'm only going to show you the absolute basics, but if you want to see more advanced topics covered in future videos, please make sure to let me know. The trading strategy I'm using to demonstrate is a mean reversion style strategy. For demonstration purposes, I'm only going to be using a very simple and naive version of this strategy. So please don't expect anything too sophisticated. I also need to say that I don't particularly endorse this type of strategy. It just happens to be the kind of strategy that I'm currently researching for myself. Although I haven't yet made any decision about whether I'm going to trade this strategy for real. We'll be using Dataforge Notebook to build our code. But to do the actual backtest, I'll be installing Grademark, which is my open source API for backtesting. We're going to jump straight into the details of coding here, but if you prefer a more basic overview of trading, quantitative trading and systematic trading in JavaScript, then please look out for another video that's coming soon on my YouTube channel. We're going to start off here with the default notebook in Dataforge Notebook, but the first thing I want to do is create a new empty notebook and save it somewhere. I've just created the first code cell in this new notebook. The first thing I want to do here is load and prepare my data for use. Before I do that, I'm just going to switch over to Excel so you can see what my data looks like. Here's a CSV file that contains historical daily price data for STW. STW is an exchange traded fund for the ASX 200. This is an index for the Australian stock market. and I'm going to be doing my demo today using this. This spreadsheet contains price data for STW from 2015 to 2017. Now let's just switch back to Dataforge Notebook. The first bit of code I need is to require in the libraries that I need. I'll be using Dataforge to load and prep my data. I need Dataforge FS to be able to read and write files. I'll soon be using Dataforge indicators to compute some indicators for STW for my trading signals. And I'll soon be using Dataforge plot so I can plot my data and visualize it. Here's the code to load my data. There's a lot going on here. I'm loading my data into a data frame. I'm parsing some of the columns to particular formats so I can use them. I've set an index because pretty soon I'm going to compute an indicator and I need an index to be able to merge my indicator back into my original data frame. I've also renamed the data column to time. That's just so that my data conforms to the layout required by the Grademark API. Now I've just added some code to preview the first five rows of my data. I do this just to confirm that my data is okay and that I've prepared it correctly. There'd be no point trying to backtest a strategy against dodgy data, and I just want to verify that I'm working with the data that I, that I hope to be working with. Uh, you should note that Dataforge Notebook automatically installs any NPM modules that we use the first time we run the code. So all those modules that we've required in, they've automatically been downloaded, and, and that actually happened the first time I ran this code um, in my rehearsals for this video. Okay, so that data looks pretty good, as well it should be. I've practiced this demo a few times now. Now I'm going to create the next code cell. Now as an extra step of checking, I'm just going to use Dataforge plot to visualize the final 100 days of STW's closing price. Okay, that's looking pretty good. It looks like there is some nice volatility here in STW, and, and that's what I want with the kind of strategy that we're looking at backtesting today. Okay, so now I'm going to need some indicators. I need to compute an indicator that I can use as a trading signal. This indicator will give me a rule as to when I should buy and sell STW. I'm not doing anything particularly sophisticated in, in this first strategy. I'm going to be using a simple moving average. You can see here that I'm calling the SMA function from the Dataforge indicators library. This gives me a rolling average of STW's closing price over a 30 day window of time. Now I'm merging the moving average back into the original STW data frame because I need to have these two data sets together to make trading decisions when I'm running my backtest. Now this is why we added the index before. We added the index so that I can merge the data together based on the date. And I've just plotted the closing price compared to the moving average. I wanted to just check this uh, visually, that my moving average was being computed correctly. And, and the easiest way to do that is to put it in a chart and just see it in front of you. Okay, now it's time to define our strategy. Firstly here, you can see that I'm including some functions from the Grademark backtesting library. I'll be using these in a moment to run the backtest and then analyze the results. After that, you can see the JavaScript object that defines my trading strategy. 
As I mentioned earlier, this is a very simple mean reversion style trading strategy. It buys when the price is below the average, it waits for mean reversion to occur, and then it sells. There's some code there for the entry rule, and it says that I should buy when the day's close is less than the 30 day average. I've also got some code there for an exit rule, and that says that I should exit when the day's close is greater than the 30 day average. I also have a stop loss rule that says I should exit if the price drops by 2% or more. This stop loss rule helps me cap my losses um, so they don't get out of control and I don't lose too much money when a trade goes against me. Now this is the code that runs the actual backtest, so I'm just going to actually run the backtest right now. You can see that we're passing in uh, our strategy and our input data series to the backtest function. And what it produces is a series of trades. It has simulated our strategy on the historical data day by day. And as it's produced each trade, it's captured them to a list. And that's what we get as the output of the backtest function. I've printed out the number of trades, which turns out to be 61, which you can see there. Then I've displayed the first five trades so that we can verify that everything looks OK. I can also plot my trades to a bar chart. It's always a good idea to visualize your data. In this case, I'm checking the profits on my trades. I can say easily identify the trade that has the most profit. That happens to be 5.16%. I can also easily verify that my stop loss rule is working. As you can see on the negative side of the bar chart, that all my losing trades capped at just under or over 2%. Of course, you'd never get this level of perfection in real trading. In backtesting, uh, what we're doing is a kind of uh, idealized notion of trading, and it represents the best case scenario we could have achieved had we run this strategy in the past. We don't have to just rely on visualization to understand the performance of our strategy. We can call the Grademark API Analyze function to compute performance metrics for our strategy. We start the analysis by providing the initial amount of capital. In this case, I'm starting trading with $10,000. I'm also passing in the list of trades that we generated uh, in the previous code cell. So what the Analyze function is doing is walking through each of the trades one by one, and it's applying the profit or loss to our capital. So for each trade, depending on if the trade is a winner or a loser, that's going to increase or reduce our capital. What we get at the end is a JavaScript object that you can see printed out uh, in the output there. And the, the fields of the object are the computed metrics, the performance of our strategy. You can see there the starting capital, the final capital at the end, uh, the amount of profit that we made in total, and a few other useful metrics as well. We aren't quite done yet. I'm just computing and plotting an equity curve. This shows the value of our account growing over time. Ideally, we want to see this going up because it means we're, we've got a profitable trading strategy over time. And usually we'd like to see it being fairly smooth rather than volatile. Another chart that I always like to plot is drawdown. This chart shows the amount of time we spend um, at a loss. Basically, it shows the amount of time where we're underwater. It measures the amount of, of loss from the highest peak uh, to the lowest trough, and it can give us a feel for the amount of risk in our strategy. Well, that's it for this video. I've only covered the absolute basics here. And please bear in mind that backtesting um, won't tell you exactly what you're going to make with a strategy in the future. We're, we're simulating a, like a perfect world situation that happened in the past. So just, just be careful that you don't put too much faith in the results that you get from your backtesting. They're, they're just there to give you an idea and that they're there to help you uh, eliminate the bad strategies. Now, there are many other advanced techniques I use in my own backtesting. You can see some of them listed on the screen there. If you're interested in hearing about any of these topics in future videos, please reach out and let me know. My email is uh, ashley at codecapers.com.au. Now, this notebook that I've been working through is actually an example notebook that's included with DataForge Notebook. To register your interest in DataForge Notebook, please head over to www.dataforgenotebook.com. As I said at the beginning, I also have a video coming soon that's an overview of the basics of quantitative and systematic trading. So if you need that kind of primer, please look out for that video soon on my YouTube channel. I'll also soon have a blog post relating to this video. So please keep an eye on my blog, www.dataforgenotebook.com thedatawrangler.com. Thank you for listening. See you next time.